Question 8a. State the relative basicity of phenylamine. Okay, this one. Uh, benzylamine, this one. And uh, ammonia. Explain your answer. Okay, first, uh, we need to identify which one is the most basic uh, um, amine. Um, so if we try to compare the phenylamine and this benzylamine, uh, actually there is a small difference. The amine group here is next to a CH2 and this whole group is, a, is electron donating. So means it will donate electrons to the uh, this uh, nitrogen uh, and eventually it, uh, increase the this uh, availability of this long back. And uh, for the uh, phenylamine, uh, the nitrogen is direct bond to the benzene ring. So the p orbitals of the this nitrogen will overlap with this benzene, and eventually this lone pair will delocalize into the uh, benzene ring. So it will less uh, it will let this uh, lone pair uh, less available. Okay, so this one is a comparison, uh, and of course uh, need to uh, compare together with ammonia. Um, so now, for the uh, first part, you need to put which one is the most basic. Uh, so as we know now, this uh, uh, benzene ring with CH2 is the electron donating group uh, to the nitrogens and uh, let the, this lone pair more available. Uh, so therefore, this is the most basic amine. And followed by the ammonia. And the ammonia is more basic than the phenylamine. Means the lone pair on this nitrogen is uh, least available. So it's, uh, it's least basic. Um, the first thing that you need to explain is uh, to uh, relate with the uh, basic city. Uh, so this is uh, uh, how the basic city to be measured. Okay, basic city of amine is depends on availability of the lone pair on nitrogen to accept the uh, hydrogen ion. If the lone pair on nitrogen is more available, then it's actually more basic. That's why we will put the benzyl amine, this one, uh, as the most basic amine among these three. And uh, after that, you just need to explain the most basic and the least basic. Uh, and that's all. So let's start with this, uh, the most basic amine, uh, benzyl amine. So why is most, bas most basic? Because uh, it has the alkyl group. So the benzene ring with CH2 is an alkyl group, which now is electron donating. And this will increase the uh, availability of lone pair on nitrogen. That's why it's the most basic amine. Phenylamine is this basic because the lone pair on nitrogen is uh, delocalized in the pi bond uh, electron system in the benzene ring. Uh, so therefore, it's less available. This is how you explain. Yeah? Uh, for part B, an excess of the bromine is added to separate sample of the uh, phenylamine uh, and benzene. Um, phenylamine reacts readily with the bromine water to form a product M. State what is the expected observation and draw the structure of M. Uh, because we know that phenylamine, um, this one, the phenylamine, the a lone pair on nitrogen can delocalize in the benzene ring and the benzene ring is has more electron and is more active therefore it's more readily to react with electrophile that's why phenylamine is more reactive than benzene right so means whenever there is a uh, uh, this uh, electrophile like this uh, bromine so uh, it will undergo uh, electrophilic substitution easily with the phenylamine because it's already stated uh, the uh, bromine is in excess. So therefore, it will, uh, <clears throat> it, for, because this uh, is the electron donating group, this uh, amine, uh, so it will direct to four, six position. Means all the positions now will be uh, with the bromine. Means the substitutions uh, will happen at these three position. So eventually it will form this uh, 
uh, 246 uh, amine. so this compound, uh, which is the white precipitate. So this is a white precipitate. Uh, after this phenylamine, react with the uh, bromine water. Part 2. Uh, benzene does not react with bromine, uh, so it needs the catalyst. Uh, suggest why bromine reacts, uh, uh, why bromine reacts uh, with the phenylamine, but not with the benzene. <clears throat> uh, it because of the the lone pair on nitrogen I told you just now, which makes the the benzene ring more active, right? Okay, so in the phenylamine, the lone pair on nitrogen is delocalized, as I told you just now. And therefore, this lone pair can join the pi electron system in the ring, and this will increase the electron density in the ring. And therefore, it will let it more susceptible with the, this uh, electrophile. Means it's more likely to react with electrophile and its form products. Part C. Explain why and benzyl amide. Uh, this one uh, is much weaker base than ammonia. Uh, this one is amide, and uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, there is a CONH here, the amide bond. Uh, so why this, uh, even though here there is a, a nitrogen, uh, but it's still a weak base, or it's a really, really weak base uh, compared to this ammonia. Uh, because the lone pair on this nitrogen is not that available. So we know that uh, this uh, uh, oxygen in the, in the amide is electron withdrawing. So uh, <clears throat> the lone pair on nitrogen can delocalize into this, uh, this group, the C double bond ON here. So it can delo delocalize and eventually this lone pair uh, is less available. When the lone pair on nitrogen is less available, then it's actually less basic. Uh, that's the reason why. Okay, so because lone pair on nitrogen is delocalized into the carbonyl group here, right? Uh, which makes it less available, means less basic. Part D. Um, so uh, use back the same uh, compound just now, uh, the benzyamide. Uh, so this one is formed by reacting uh, benzoyl chloride, this one, with ammonia. Complete the mechanism in the figure 8.1 uh, for the reactions uh, between these two reactants. Include all the lone pair of electrons, uh, carry arrows, charges, uh, and uh, dipoles, and so on. Um, so what you need to draw is this. Uh, this mechanism is a uh, nucleophilic addition elimination means nucleophile at first, then uh, something will eliminate, uh, means the, uh, in this case is the correct. Okay, so let's start with this mechanism. Um, so first you need to draw a lone pair on nitrogen, and after that uh, put the dipole uh, on the, this uh, carbonyl, uh, as well as the cor chlorine here. So put partial positive on the carbonyl carbon, and uh, uh, partial negative uh, on the oxygen, uh, put a partial negative on this uh, chlorine also. Um, after that, uh, draw one arrow from the lone pair, point to this uh, partial positive carbon, because this is the, the site that can attract the lone pair. And this one, it shows that it's formed a new bonding. When a new bond form, then the uh, one of the bond must break. So the pi bond in the carbonyl will break, and you need to draw one arrow from this uh, carbonyl group point to this oxygen to show uh, these uh, pi electrons move to the oxygen. So eventually it will form this intermediate. Uh, so remember to put the, uh, the lone pair on oxygen, put a negative charge there. Um, so this is the oxide. And of course, um, because uh, the nitrogen and carbon form new bonding here, as you can see here, this one, the new bonding, and the nitrogens now with four bonding, um, so is uh, you need to put a charge positive on nitrogen. Okay, so this is the intermediate, and in this intermediate you need to put a few arrows. So first 
you need to put uh, one arrow from this lone pair on the oxide and point back to the CO bonding to show that the carbonyl groups reform and at the same time you need to draw one arrow uh, from this CCl bond to show that the CCl bond break and this pair of electrons will move to the chlorine and eventually it will form chloride and another arrow you need to put is between the N and H bond you need to draw one arrow from the NH bond point to the nitrogen to show that NH bond break and these electrons move to the nitrogen and restore the lone pair. So eventually uh, by making this or by doing this it will make these products. So means the H here will combine with the chloride the H plus to form HCl and this one will form the amides eventually. So it will form CONH here. Um, part E. Phenyl uh, aniline, um, this one, the, uh, this is an uh, amino acid. Uh, the isoelectric point is 5.5. Um, so it uh, looks like this one. Uh, when you want to draw the amino acid, so this is how it looks like. Um, state what it means by isoelectric point. Very easy. Uh, the pH at which molecule exists as a jitron ion or the molecule has no overall charge. Uh, it's just like this one. This one is the dipolar ion we call jitron ion. Uh, because positive and negative charge together, actually this species is neutral. So means uh, when the pH, uh, when the pH, uh, the molecules can form this dipolar ion, that uh, particular pH range or pH we call isoelectric point means at this pH uh, 5.5. So we know that uh, the this uh, phenyl aniline is uh, exists at this dipolar ion form. Now part two, draw the structure of this uh, um, amino acid at pH 10. So I already told you here just now, when the pH is 5.5, it exists as the dipolar ion. Now the pH is higher, means in its basic condition uh, compared to just now, means now it's no longer dipolar ion, uh, because in basic condition, we know that the acid will form the salt means the acid group here this one will react with the uh, extra hydroxide to form the COO negative the carboxylate salt and of course uh, under alkaline condition the amines will not really form ammonium it will stay as amine form so what you will get is actually this one means the NH2 no change and the COOH will react with the hydroxide and form the carboxylate or you can draw like this right part F so we have uh, two amino acid now okay this one and uh, this one um, so these two reacts to form a dipeptide uh, containing both amino acid residues draw the structure of this dipeptide so this is not poly, polypeptide, yeah? this is dipeptide. So you need to draw uh, the dipeptide using this two. It can be any sequence. Uh, let's say now we start from the, the first, uh, this uh, amino acid. Um, and uh, we need to, okay, this one you don't need to show. You just need to show this, uh, this answer. Okay, I just show you how to make it. Uh, so this is the first amino acid. Uh, it's better for you to draw in this uh, uh, format or this structure. You put the, this is the main structure of amino acid. So you put the CH and this CH, uh, now this C bonded to uh, amine and COOH and this is a side chain. The CH2, uh, C665, this benzene ring uh, is a side chain. So now you need to draw another amino acid with the same structure. So this is the uh, aniline. 
So uh, make sure the this uh, carboxylic acid and the amine they are side by side. So this one it will undergo condensation. So this OH and H uh, reacts and form H2O, and new bonds form between the C and N to form this amide bond or this peptide bond. Uh, so after that, uh, you just continue with the remaining structure. Uh, so this is the dipeptide that form from these two amino acids. Okay, that's all. Thank you.